A producer showed off a crazy new face tracking and projection technique. Just in time for Mission Impossible 5. Researchers are working on new solar panels that fold up like origami. If it's anything like my origami, it looks like a cross between a bird and a unicorn. In other words, pure garbage. And Kobe Bryant played on an interactive LED full-sized basketball court, bringing my dreams of a rollerball league ever closer to reality. Yeah, your shirt looks like origami. Oh, thanks. Do you fold up? Nope. It's Tomorrow Daily. Greetings, citizens of the internet. Welcome to Tomorrow Daily, the best tech talk show in the known universe. I'm your host, Ashley Esketa. Uh, joining me once again, Michael Hobbs. Hello. I'm here again. You are here again. Rich is out uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this Ooh. week. He'll be back Thursday. Nightmare. Um, <laughs> Mike's like, that's my nightmare. Uh, but we will have Mike here, and then hopefully I, I may have a surprise guest. <laughs> I have a surprise friend come in and co-host the show. Terrific. Yeah, it should be fun. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we have to talk about all the news, and some of the stories this week are pretty crazy. So let's hit the headlines. <laughs> all right, I saw this and immediately freaked out. Yeah. This is crazy. So I mentioned in the cold open this crazy face tracking and projection technology. This comes from a Japanese producer and technical director named uh, Nobumichi Asai. And he released this video showing off his techniques. They've done some uh, different projection tech before, but uh, this one in particular really caught my eye. So what this is, is they took this woman's face and they have the, the dots on her face as one would for face tracking technology. Right. And um, like you would see in a special effects for movies. Right. And they scanned it. And now that's an actual LED projection where she has makeup and that part where she's opening her eyes is not her opening her eyes. It's a little off, just a little. And you can still see her eyelashes, but now they've added more makeup. Very dramatic. It's amazing. It's really cool. And so, um, so here's, see the blinking is a little weird. I think that's the only thing they need to work on is the eyes. Right, well, yeah, I mean, she has to keep her eyes closed. But now look, she looks like she's made of metal. Yeah, this is awesome. Now she's, like, this is unreal to me. This is amazing technology. So, so cool. So here's, it looks like her face is in pieces. Yeah, this reminds me of that uh, reveal, a cool reveal in uh, AI. Yeah. Where the uh, robot's face opens up. And as she turns her head, this is really neat. Um, it shimmers, and you can see some of the, some of the work underneath the skin that they're hinting at. And then uh, all of a sudden, her face opens and she turns into a robot. And that's all projected on her face. Yeah, in real time as she's uh, moving around. That is incredible. Really it is cool truly effect. incredible. Um, so there's a lot of different things that this could be used for in the future. Uh, but I really love this idea of sort of, um, first of all, obviously, future use. Uh, makeup applications like beauty makeovers, things like that. Um, the next Bjork video. <laughs> the next Bjork music video. I'm sure I'm sure we'll see this in somebody's <laughs> music video. Beyonce, somebody who wants to do something very avant-garde. Yeah, 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 yeah. uh, we'll be able to see that. Um, but I actually thought, I started thinking about what other applications mm. we might see. We may see this type of technology in phones for photography at some point. Oh. Um, just because... You know, it, it would track your face just like in uh, Google Hangouts where you're able to have sort of those little fun like horns or top pad or a monocle. Oh, right, right. Funny but chat things. it would get more sort of advanced and sophisticated and then we'd be able to kind of have that really cool special effects technology on our phones. And where would it project from? I don't know. A little tiny, just I guess. Well, we've heard like projection phones could have been a thing at sure, some point. Sure, that could so. be coming. That could be coming. And I think uh, what was one of the other applications I thought might have been interesting that you said was plastic surgery. Yeah. You could get a preview, a sneak peek of how you might look, you know, after. Which would be very surgery. helpful for people because I think it's very difficult for them. I mean, you can do 3D rendering now and everything. And it's kind of expensive and it takes a while. Right. Um, so I think it would be, I just think it's really cool. Now you can see in real time, look around, move your head. Yeah. See well, this, might look. this guy's site has all kinds of projection stuff. He did something for Subaru where there was a bunch of cars dancing in a window at a on Subaru a building. building. It projected it was, on a building. It was really neat. Pretty cool. Um, so yeah, here's some, some more of their stuff. Uh, Producer Logan is on it today. So they do a lot of this sort of projection technology. So they're, mm. they're clearly very into what they do. And, uh, and man, it shows, because that face, that face stuff is nuts. That was nuts. cool. I can't wait to see the next application Ugh, of so that. Neat. So neat. So tell awesome. me about this origami solar cell business. Oh, well, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, getting things into space, now the biggest enemies of that are weight and size. Right, right? correct. Because you have to basically have the amount of uh, weight 
is used in fuel to get something up. So the smaller something can be, the better. So these researchers at uh, Brigham Young University and, NASA, and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory have come up with this novel new way of folding solar cells based on the ancient Japanese art of uh, origami, or paper folding, uh, and also based on the research of uh, Japanese astrophysicist uh, Kodi Muda came up with this technique, and they've expanded on it. So here Whoa. you can see um, the idea is that you could basically make a solar cell, make a solar panel one-tenth its size if you fold it up like this. And then deploy it after it gets into space. Deploy it once it gets into space. So it I launches see. in the, what, what they call a satellite-friendly sort of cylindrical form, mm -hmm. and it gets up and then unfurls to, uh, here's the perfect example. This Whoa. is a 120th uh, scale model that they built. So wow. from something that, you know, it goes about 4.1 feet, and the idea is to make something eventually that's about, uh, what, 20 times this size. So it would unfurl to, let's say, uh, 80 feet. Or that's about, uh, amazing. 20 meters. So for powering future satellites, uh, even powering uh, future deep space vehicles with uh. Uh, microwave thrusters, or even beaming energy back down to Earth. Wow. Uh, things like this. That is so cool. Yeah. I wonder, I, I just, like, it always blows my mind. I always wonder the thing that they are thinking of, like, I wonder if we could do it like origami. Like, no, what's, who's the person who is like, I just, that, the Japanese researcher that you're talking about, like, he's like, you know, we could fold this like origami, and then they made it happen. That's then they really made neat. it happen, yeah, it's awesome. That's so, so cool. I think we'll be seeing that in the next few years. Yeah. Launching. That would be pretty neat. Yeah. It's just, just a lot of really good practical space application for that because technology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so the third story is something that may not help us go to space, uh, but this is very cool mm. in terms of sports entertainment. This could change the way that we watch sports. Yeah. So Nike has created this full court LED installation. So here they are in a time lapse getting everything together. And uh, and there it is. It's it's a full court. It can it can play video. It can display. It can track player movement. It kind of reminds me of those projections at the mall where it projects down, and then you can like walk around and koi fish, and the koi fish move based on where you are. But so the point of this is is that it was created for this uh, competition called Nike Rise, which sends a, one winner to the Nike World Basketball Festival in Barcelona next month. And um, this is actually in a place they've, they've dubbed House of Mamba because Kobe Bryant, the Black Mamba, uh, LA Laker, right. Kobe Bryant, is, uh, is training the group, the, the group of sort of, I don't think they're finalists quite yet, but the group of contestants for this competition. Was that in China? Yes, it is in Shanghai. Okay. Oh, okay. It's in Shanghai. And, um, and it's really neat because they're able to show all of Kobe's moves and techniques, mm. and then the floor can actually create a drill based on that and uh, show, you know, and repeat itself. So everybody, you know, gets in line and they do the drill and they do it just like Kobe would. Right. Which is pretty neat. I mean, what do you, th do you think this will be the future of basketball courts? Well, I feel like it could be for a couple of reasons. Mm. Uh, the first one being that a lot of other sports are played on hardwood floors. Yeah. So volleyball, for example. Mm. So let's say at the Pyramid at Cal State Long Beach, they have a big sports complex called, or Poly Pavilion at UCLA. So let's say they have this giant LED floor, and it would be really expensive, of course, um, so it would sort of be a luxury for quite a while. But at the end of the day, you wouldn't have to lay down and paint all of those lines and refinish those wood floors every single year. Mm, good point. And for me, um, to be able to go from volleyball to basketball courts without any interfering lines, so you're not sure, like sometimes younger players, they go, well, I don't know if that's the basketball court or the volleyball court. Right. And so. It's nice to think that you might be able to have a clean court for every sport that's played badminton. Mm. Um, there's a lot of different sports that are played on those courts, and so I think that would be really neat to be able to have a clean court there for any sport that's playing. Yeah, easy, just like changing a, a wallpaper. Yeah, just changing it, just hit a button, and then it's done. It's a new, whole new court. I want to see something like um, video games where the person with the ball has like a little ring around them. Oh, so man, that would be so <laughs> great. Real life off. NBA Jam. Uh, yeah, or like, remember, I think it was the story we did last week, the, uh, you could move someone's limbs from afar. You yeah. Could, move real people around on the court. Just move real people around on the court with your Oculus Rift yeah. and your uh, Kinect? Yep. That would be amazing. That would be weird. I just want to see the NBA Jam Invitational sponsored by Sega. Mm. Like, that would be really fun. And then you could use projection mapping to give them giant heads. Yes, perfect. Oh, man, look at We just combined almost all the technology. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure we'll figure out how to do the origami solar cells. Well, it'll power everything. We'll Maybe just put it up just, on the like, roof. Yeah, or like fly them like kites. Oh, yeah, perfect. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, on that note, we are going to take a quick 30-second break. We'll be right back with another Mario Kart throwdown. Uh-oh. Really what good happens? race. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, we will also be back with an episode of Back It or Hack It and your user feedback. So don't click away. It's tomorrow daily. Welcome back to the show. Uh, we, again, because Mike might only be here one day this week, mm. we had to play our Mario Kart throwdown. Now, this happened this weekend. It did. It was on a, a great session. It was a, it was a long, it was a like, couple hours. But we picked the last race that we played, yeah. which ended up being Rainbow Road. So, producer Logan, let's check out the footage here. All right. So, I'm Rosalina. Mike's Mike again. Always. Um, and actually, this race was pretty exciting. Mike was up there. Uh, Mike was in front of me, actually, for, I want to say for like the first, what? Right, lap and a half. At least, and first I half was of the race. Beginning to think of victory. Yeah, and Mike was really excited. I got my uh, green shell insurance. Yep. Oh yeah, you know, and you got a shield in the back. Yep. You don't get hit. But I don't know what happened to it. I think I'm assuming you shot it, or maybe somebody tried to hit you, and then it saved you. So, and everything was going well, and uh, and then, well, things Some just things just started going downhill for Mike. Ashley did something. Uh, very yeah. Bad. This is uh, th this is my brother also, by the way. We're oh, playing. So it. there it is. Boom! Right there. I hit Mike with a green shell, a master marksman. And a green shell from which I never recovered. Did not recover from that green shell, and uh, and I took off down the down the stretch, and there I am finishing in first place. So Showing that's off me. as uh, usual. And Mike, you dropped all the way to sixth. I did. That's pretty bad. I was upset. You were two points ahead before. 21-23. Or no, I was. You were still ahead by two. I was two. ahead by two, 21, 23. Now I have 38 points, and you only got six. Incredible math. So now I'm ahead by 10. That might be right. I think it is. But that can be turned around very quickly. It can be. And all it takes is one victory, one major victory, and me, one major loss. Right. You need to lose badly. Which will never happen. Down to the bottom. Nope. Sorry. I foresee it. No way. So that was our Mario Kart throwdown. I'm still ahead. feel really good about that. But now. Somebody's going to have to try real hard to take me down. Me. Not gonna happen. Uh, but now, and we have a graphic for this, I'm so excited. It's time for Back It or Hack It. Good old hatchets. Ooh, act oh, that hatchets or axes? I say hatchets. You hold them in your hand. They don't oh, look big enough to be axes. Interesting. I learned something. Yeah. So, I backed this this weekend, full disclosure. Uh oh. I saw it immediately backed. Uh, have you ever had that problem where you have a stick of butter and it's too hard? I you hate that, yeah. It's so annoying. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't know how it took us 2,000 years to reach the, the zenith of butter knife technology, Ooh. but we finally have done it. This is uh, this is the Kickstarter video, and you can see he's obviously, this guy's struggling to butter oh, his that's bread. That's the person in the infomercial that can't Which do Which I don't know who's making white bread with just butter on it. I mean, I guess as a snack, maybe I've done it. So here it is. This is the knife. This is called the Stupendous Splendiferous Butter Up. And that is why it's so special. Whoa. Look at that. It's like a butter grater. It is. It's like a it's like a little uh, butter peeler almost. So the idea here is what? It makes, it makes it much easier to spread your hard butter. Much easier to spread. And it, the nice thing is is I actually really like this. So he, they were showing like you could see as he's as he's using it, it curls, and then as you spread it, it actually pushes through to the other side. So you actually also get a very even spread across your piece of piece of bread. Amazing. It's so great. You want to know how much it is? Well, how much is it? $14. And 95 cents. <laughs> available now. Call now. Operators are standing by. Do I get two if I order now? I ordered two. I got, well, let's see. It was it was like, fi I think it was $15 for the knife. Uh -huh. And then it was another 10 bucks uh, or 6 bucks because it's shipping from Australia. These are two Australian. Oh, a couple of Aussies. A couple of Aussies have thought this up. And uh, so it was an extra $6 for shipping. And then I paid an extra ten dollars for an extra knife. Ooh, okay. So it's thirty-one bucks total for me, and that was to get it by Christmas. I paid a little okay. extra to get okay. it by Christmas. Okay. So have they met their goal? I think. Oh, they have. by far, yeah, like three. I think three hundred percent. Oh wow. They're they're just they're crushing Kickstarter right now. But I had to tell you guys about it because listen, technology doesn't have to be high tech to be amazing technology, and I feel like that was a really good example of that. Just clever. Just very clever, clever. and an evolution of something that we've used for. Thousands of years without any problems, and somebody found a way to make it better. I love that. Yeah, surprised it's taken this long. I know. That's why it's like two thousand years. It took like longer than that to, to come up with a good idea for a butter knife. I mean, I've been using soft, spreadable butter. Yeah, margarine. It's not margarine. I use it. I can't believe it's not butter. And oh, now I, I get to go to real butter. I would never do that. But no. uh, but yeah, now you can upgrade to the real butter. 
The real stuff. You know. And then I can gain a bunch of weight. No, no, no. I'm just going to watch that figure. <laughs> All right. So that's our back it or hack it. I say, I say back it, obviously, because I did. You say um, yes? Sure, I say yes. Why not? Back it. Yeah. Um, it's got quite a it's got quite a few days left, so you can go check that out. Those guys are gonna get rich. Oh, you guys! It's time for your user feedback. So last week, uh, you weren't here on Thursday, but we mentioned the Robo Swarm. Oh yeah, I saw, I saw the thousand story. Robots. Sure. Um, we asked you guys to use the hashtag TD Robo Swarm and tell us uh, what your, what your, how big your Robo Swarm would be and what you would have them do with it. Mm. Like, what, what you, would you make them do? Mm. And Matt wrote to us and said, my swarm would be brain implants and every person to keep the peace and to leak very future Apple products. Whoa. Wink. That's Wink. a weird one. Wink. That was, no, that's, that is a little weird. What's the winking about? Brain control. Well, he had a wink there. He said very future Apple products. Maybe he knows something. Hmm. <laughs> Possibly. How's that going to work? How are the robots going to do that? I don't know. Well, maybe it would be like in Wrath of Khan where they put in his ear. Oh, great reference. Yeah. Yeah. Mind control. And then just they get right in there. But if he doesn't know about the Apple devices, he can't say anything about it. That's true. He'd have to infiltrate Cupertino. Hmm. Maybe the robots would plug into the web. Oh, boy. That would be terrifying. Uh, and then our next one's from Devin. And he said, hashtag TD RoboSwarm. I would have 5,000 and they would make my bed for me. Yeah. That's a pretty reasonable goal. I like that. I think I would just that. like to be taken like around. I, yeah, just, just, I just lay on it. It just moves me around. I just like that idea of, um, you know, like in X-Men, where it's like Magneto has like all the plates underneath him as he walks. Yeah. So you would be like that with robots. Exactly. I would like that. Like that would be really walking fun. carpet. That would be great. Mm. Uh, today's hashtag is hashtag TD Quartz for the LED court. And I want to know... Is this good or bad, these LED courts? Do you think they're a good idea or bad idea? And and what would you want to see them used for, specifically? I mean, other than sports, or what would they do with the sport? Uh, either or. Oh. Your choice. User's choice. It's basically, I mean, it's a big TV on the floor. Yeah, yeah. See, so you can use stuff. it for all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So anything, non-sports, sports, whatever you want. But I just, I'm really curious. I think you guys are going to come up with some really creative stuff. Mm. Um, all right, you guys. It's time for our phone talk for the day. And our phone talker for the day comes from Alfonso R. Oh. But good. he says we can call him Al. Okay. He says, Hi, my name is Alfonso, but you can call me Al. <laughs> I have a photo I'd like to submit. This photo was taken from my recent trip to a Disney theme park, Animal Kingdom. With all the high heat temperature readings we go through as random weather as Florida gets, it's nice to have a well humidified rainforest like atmosphere to take a breather and chill. The natural sounds of water from a river or waterfall can't be beat from the concrete jungle most of us are adapted to. Besides, it kind of reminds me of my birthplace in Puerto Rico. I miss our little island from time to time. Haven't been back for years. It's overdue for a visit. And yes, I know this waterfall, you can see it very barely in the background, is man-made, but shh, I'm escaping in this moment of make-believe. Mm. So that is the, uh, that's the image. I've been there. Um, it's gorgeous. I mean, the nice thing is, is they actually do, these are all real plants. It's not like they're plastic. Even these red things? Yeah, yeah. Looks like wax. Nope, nope, they're real. Mm. Um, that's a really nice picture. It's gorgeous. Um, and that is definitely, I mean, wow, it's really well maintained, but, you know, Disney. Now, in Fort, I wish Al had told us which phone he'd use to take this picture. It's it, a, mystery, a mystery device. It mystery is phone. Mystery phone. Let's take a guess. What do you think? Uh, looks like a Galaxy picture to me. I was going to say a Galaxy S5 or a Note 3. Oh, boy. I hope those are my, those hope are my he, choices. Hope he tells us. Yeah, so um, Al, or I'm going to call you Fonzie. Listen, he, Fonzie. He didn't say that. Mom calling you Fonzie. Oh. Listen, Fonz, email us and tell us what phone you used because I'm now I'm cu really curious. I can't survive without knowing the answer to this mystery. I'd survive, but I'm just slightly curious. Okay, fair enough. Mm. Uh, that is it for the show. Um, if you would like to send your photography in, you can email us a link to your photography tomorrow at cnet.com is our email address. Uh, no attachments, please, because I won't open them. Um, and also, we have to be able to get them to producer Logan to put in the show. Uh, and then uh, you can also send us your hashtag of the day. If you don't want to use Twitter, totally fine. You can email it to us. Uh, or you can find us on social media. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're all over the internet. Tomorrow At Daily. Tomorrow Daily, correct. Except for Google+. Plus. Where? Tom tomorrow Daily TV. Mm. That's us. Right. Where can we find you on the internet? Um, pretty much just on Twitter. Okay. At uh, Valis23. Valis23 with a V. Make it known. Do it. Just go harass him about Mario Kart. Do not. Give him a little, give him a little, you, maybe you should motivate him to win. Don't do that. I get easily depressed. <laughs> 
So, yeah, you can hit up Mike at Valis23 on Twitter. I'm at Ashley Escada. Uh, pretty much anywhere on the internet, you can look it up. And uh, we will be back tomorrow with a new show. Be good humans, you guys. <laughs>